everyone, and welcome to episode 27 of Sovereign AF Podcast. I'm your host, Regina, and I'm here with my beautiful co-host, Cynthia. And we have a very special guest tonight. We have a very special topic, and we are going to talk about microdosing and um, all the benefits there. And our guest is a psychedelic facilitator. Um, she actually does a lot of different things and I'm going to actually let you tell a little bit more about your background, but we're so excited to connect with you, Bijou, and, um, learn about all about the psychedelic world and microdosing. So welcome. Yes, Thank you yes. for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So can you give us a little, uh, bit about your background, like summarize, summarize Bijou and how did you get into psychedelics? Yeah, so um, I've been an entrepreneur ever since I graduated from college, and um, I think in my journey of entrepreneurship, you realize how many hats entrepreneurs wear and how little support that they have. So I started really getting into biohacking and understanding how can I support my brain and my body to be as high functioning as I possibly could. Um, and then I started getting into supporting people with business themselves, um, more in the branding and showing up online aspect. Um, but in doing so, I realized how many mental blocks we all have that are deeply rooted in narratives um, and past wounds and uh, all the other stuff that's really hard to talk about. So um I honestly got into it for selfish reasons. I was trying to understand because there were some things that weren't budging in my life, some things that weren't healing. And no matter what I tried, uh, my brain was stronger than than most of the modalities I was playing with. Um, and then enter mushrooms, which thank goodness mm. for me were much stronger than my brain once I got comfortable with them and using them in slightly larger doses. And then I started working with some of my clients that were open to it and then seeing their shift. And I was like, oh, wow, this might be the ticket for some people. Um, mm. So then I did my due diligence and I went and I got my facilitatorship to understand how to work with this medicine properly. And um, then <laughs> the mushroom showed me how disconnected I was from my body. So then I again, selfishly went into my training for Vita program, which was sex, love and relationship and body connection. And now I've kind of smashed together all of the trainings that I've been a part of to have my own little special cocktail of supporting people, which is mostly like couples and women and then entrepreneurs um, and how to use psychedelics to heal, reprogram and to really up level, especially if they've been plateauing for a while. Yeah, oh, I so love it. Love, love it. And how long has it been that you've been, you kind of put all those pieces together? Um, I think so. I've been an entrepreneur for a long time now, but um, my actual training in brain reprogramming and facilitatorship and sex, love and relationship were in 2020. So I've been doing this um, full time for about four years ish, uh, and, uh, loving every minute of it. It was definitely not something that I ever saw myself doing, but makes so much sense now that I'm here and I really love it. I get to go deep with people and that's what really makes me happy because as I'm sure y'all know, shallow conversations get really old after a while. <laughs> yeah. For sure. <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah, especially in today's world where um, some people just don't understand what's really going on in this reality. And it's it's pretty much all you can have with them is a shallow conversation because they're not going to understand at the deeper level. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, let's like, for instance, my hairstylist today, she didn't even know what microdosing was. So for the basic, basic people that don't even know what it is, how would you describe what microdosing is? Um, so great question. Um, 
there's a lot of propaganda and misinformation from the past, um, considering this very safe and effective plant medicine as um, in the same category as very destructive drugs like heroin and meth and cocaine and whatnot. So you can honestly consider it a supplement in, in the microdose terms. So what it can do is a, it's a very low dose of psilocybin mushroom, which there are 200 different types of psilocybin mushrooms out there, but there wow. are specific ones that are more appropriate for microdosing that are really smooth and nice and nothing too crazy. So technically a microdose is subperceptive, which would mean that um, it, it would feel like you took a supplement. So there's maybe times that you've taken um, an herb or um, a vitamin or mineral and not felt anything at all or felt something slightly like a little bit of a boost. So maybe like a cup of coffee or a glass of wine. Um, that's really uh, the best way to explain what it might feel like. But essentially what it's doing is that it's really soothing the nervous system and really supporting the brain in, in creating new neural pathways. And what that does is it makes you more of like a grounded, uh, aware person because uh, people that are in fight or flight um, and in survival uh, and are very distracted and very stressed are not people that are present, not people that are making good decisions, not people that feel healthy and happy. And so majority of America right now is like revving at a very high Right, feeling very stressed, very overwhelmed, and very scared. And so this just brings you down a couple of notches that allow you to feel more in control of yourself, more empowered, and more able to look at your life, take a little bit of a step back and be like, okay, what's working for me and what's not? And where am I not holding my boundaries? Where am I not supporting myself? So I know it sounds like a tall order from a very simple substance, but in working with as many people as I have, I've literally seen all different ages, all different demographics have the same types of experiences. I feel like you're like speaking to different parts of me. I'm like, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> totally. um, I definitely need to get back to microdosing. I was doing it for a little while. I didn't fully know what I was doing and I don't know if I had the right strain I love how you offer that direction, um, and helping clients to match to the appropriate strain is probably so important. Right. And, um, there is a question in the chat and then I have a question and then sin, can you do me a quick favor? Yep. Since we had so many technical difficulties, can you link my main Facebook page in that post in the group so that I think someone did ask for a link so they can't find me if you don't mind. Um, and so we have a question from Christopher who asked, I've actually heard of this strain. Um, are you familiar with the penis envy mushroom? And if so, would it be one that's not ideal for microdosing? Yep. Perfect question. Um, it's super prevalent. So whether it's penis envy or albino penis envy, um, that's more appropriate for recreational experiences or like big therapeutic trips. It's a very uh -huh. embodied experience and it has way higher visuals than some of the lighter, smoother strains. It's a very prevalent strain that is in a lot of chocolates and a lot of gummies that are out there. And that's one because they are very fun and powerful, but also mycologists love to grow them because they're not that easy to grow. So it's a little bit of a badge of honor, but yeah, mm -hmm. I would say that those are not the best strains for most people. Um, if you are doing your due diligence and dialing up to understand what's right for you, and we can talk about what dialing in means in a second, but mm -hmm. if for instance, you, um, are over 200 pounds or you're on, uh, quite a few SSRIs or, um, you're even a redhead uh, they found that there are different things that affect your tolerance. Um, then you might need oh, wow. one of the stronger strains to feel it because I mean, the placebo effect, you do slightly want to feel it, especially if you're healing a lot of somatic things in your body. 
And so mm -hmm. there's the sub-receptive dose and what I like to call the processing dose. And you need to know what both of yours are to really move the needle. But yes, Christopher, I would say unless you're a specific person, I would not suggest albino penis envy or penis envy for microdosing. Okay. Wow. It's one of the strongest strains out there. Wow. And so, okay. um, yeah, that's, that's not what feels really nice and like cozy and cuddly in a microdose. It feels rather intense. Ooh. Yeah. I can imagine. So let's, let's dive into what you mentioned about dialing it up or dialing it down. What do you mean by that? So what I've found is that a lot of people are very used to the Western medical system where it's like they want a doctor to tell them what to do and they take the dose that's on the bottle. And I understand that you want to be safe, um, but it's like that that rule follower mentality that will sometimes make them feel like microdosing isn't for them. And that means they don't feel it at all because it's too low of a dose or it, they feel it too much and that's too high of a dose. So then they just like shelve it all together, which in all actuality, everyone is so incredibly different that a true dial in process should happen. And that would be, in my opinion, to make you the most empowered and the most like able to have the nuance of what is my day like? What is the dose that's appropriate for me today would be mm -hmm. powder and you dialing in to understand, okay, 0.1 of a gram is truly subperceptive to me, but I know it's working in the background on my nervous system. So I'm going to take it or it's Saturday and I want to get creative and I want to have some fun and, and like bring in some pleasure and joy and bliss in my life and do something with my partner or with my kids. Even I can go up a little bit. Right. So um, it's understanding what the different doses are for you. And then let's say that you've been microdosing for a while and you start experiencing some grief bubble up that you've been repressing for a while. That's when I know that it's time for you to maybe do a processing dose, which means you carve out a little bit of time in your life. You take a slightly higher dose where your rational brain will shut down a little bit and it allows your subconscious and body to get a little bit more activated. So that might mean that you cry or that might mean that you shiver a little bit or that might mean that you want to journal. And in that case, this stuff comes up in the appropriate time where you're in a safe place and you're like with yourself to process it. And then that leaves your body. So mm -hmm. if you think about it, a lot of people are pushing a beach ball underwater, as I like to say, trying to keep all of their past like frustrations yeah. and emotions and traumas under the water. And then it only pops up when they're like really stressed or really rageful. So then they like get really upset about the fact that it popped up. Right. But if it was in, a very specific set and setting, then it would actually feel good to get that up mm -hmm. and out of your system. And so there's yeah. some strategy involved with um, doing this, but that's why I really like people to work with it for anywhere from three to four months when they're first working with it to really get to know how it fits into their life and how it processes their past trauma so that then once they get to a really good place with it, then they bring it in intuitively as a tool, um, as needed in the future. Love that. Yeah, yeah. Love that. And so that's, those are all things that you help people guide people with as to like how and what to do. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, some people's past trauma, it's appropriate for them maybe to do it with a therapist or with themselves, um, but others need a little bit more support and mm -hmm. maybe it's super repressed and they have no idea what narratives are blocking them. Like, why can I only get to this level? Why do I keep self-sabotaging myself? Why am I still anxious and depressed, even though technically everything around me is good and I feel safe? Like, those are big questions that need to be unpacked and excavated a bit. And typically it's best to do it with someone that's trained in that regard this medicine can be very powerful. And in my experience, which is kind of why I decided to do this work was I unpacked too much too quick. And that was like very hard on my life. I mean, I still was working and I was still doing all these things. And that's why I was like, I need to help people with this because 
there's definitely a better way to go about it that is much more manageable and allows you to still feel in control of what you're doing with this medicine. So when I look at your site, it says a microdose assisted session, I think. Do you actually, when you do a session with a client, are they actually dosing while they do the session with you, whether it's small or a larger dose? Is that how it works or? So it is, it is a virtual microdose assisted session. And what's okay. really nice about that is that the way that we, that they would prepare the medicine allows it to kick in right at the time when our session would start. And okay. they would have a slightly larger than a microdose, but still very manageable. And mm. they're not going to have to drive anywhere. They're in the comfort of their own home on their bed or on their couch. And we're walking through talking about things and going through visualization. And it's really nice for them to have while their mind is open someone reframe something for them or them to come up with a new narrative or to understand something about themselves, because that's really when like shift can happen. If you mm -hmm. think about it and you're just sitting in a room by yourself, sometimes you can like ruminate on some of the same stories. And unless you have someone kind of deviate you from that or help you come up with something else that's better for you, you can yeah. kind of stay stuck in it. And so it's a really nice experience in the sense that sometimes we'll find something that needs to be addressed over a longer period of time. So let's say that someone feels really stuck in connecting to their body or sensuality. Like, yes, we're going to get somewhere on that session, but really the work comes in like consistently coming back to that over a couple of weeks and being devoted to that intention. And mm -hmm. so little by little, we start really getting them to become by micro adjustments of their actions and habits to become the person that they want to be. And then eventually, it's typically like three to six months that I work with someone, they've really developed this like safety with the medicine and with me, that if we do find the core wound that everything stems from that was developed probably at a young age, uh, like mm -hmm. I am not safe. I am not loved. I am not worthy. Then we would do a really big experience together in person and like really focusing on that, that core wound that allows them to feel like seen and held and witnessed. And mm -hmm. that's, that's really where we can make some big changes for people. But I will say regardless of whether or not you just work in the microdosing capacity, or if you use both different sizes of doses, you're mm -hmm. still going to get somewhere way different than where you are now. But yeah, mm -hmm. I do believe that like people jumping in the deep end with a big dose is not the best approach just because you're just going to be in a state of awe, which is great, but you haven't been there before. So you don't know how to focus and you might not even know what your core wound is. And also, do you feel safe with yourself in your surroundings with the person mm -hmm. you might be with, right? And you're not going to surrender to the power of the medicine if you don't feel safe. So it's a really, really important that you develop the sense of safety, not only with the medicine, but with your facilitator over time. And that takes time, unfortunately. Yeah. So yeah. if someone is um like for someone listening right now and they're just super curious about doing my like what would be the beginning thing that you would tell them to do? Uh with that with microdosing? With microdosing, like how would like how would they find um what they would need? Like say if someone has depression or anxiety. So depression and anxiety come from a lot of things. Um, it could be from past trauma. It could be from the fact that you're not happy with where you are right now. Um, and so to me, it, it would be best to talk to some, a consultant or someone that understands this. Um, if you have a therapist, you can kind of discuss like, do I have a lot of past trauma? If that's the case, then you need to be a little bit more thoughtful about the approach that you take with this medicine versus mm -hmm. if you're mostly trying to optimize your surroundings now. But I mean, regardless, I believe everyone needs to dial in. And so a lot of times people are just getting capsules or gummies in the mail and then they're like, 
not understanding what to do with that or they're trying to like double doses or take half of a gummy and that's that's fine if that's your only option but understand that it it is not like the western medical world where it's like here's your pros at good luck like everyone is so incredibly different that everyone needs that fine tooth approach of like, who are you? What is going on in your life? And let's dial you in, uh, in small increments until we really get you into a nice flow with this medicine. So if you happen to have a bag of mushrooms, uh, like you should ask yourself, what strain is it? How old is it? And if it's like something light, like golden teacher is a good one. It's not, too intense like let's say you have it and it's like uh, not older than a year and you want to grind some of that up and you want to dial in with a scale go for it Um, really start to understand what doses are right for you yeah what would you say and actually they there's a couple people that mentioned golden teacher in the Mm -hmm. comments um what would you recommend starting with like 0.1 or 100 milligrams or yeah i mean For, for most people, like, uh, that is definitely the sweet spot. Um, if, if for some reason you feel 0.1, uh, and it's super intense, obviously you could go back down to 0.05 or 0.07. That's really Mm -hmm. rare that someone would be that, that sensitive, but, um, yeah, I would say 0.1 is a good place to start. And then, uh, maybe most people are like a 0.2 to 0.3 type person, Um, and then if you get all the way up to like a 0.4 or 0.5 or 0.6, to me, that means either your medicine is old or, uh, you have a a higher tolerance and you would probably need one of the stronger strains, but yeah, that it, it kind of takes, um, being a little bit of a mad scientist to, to figure that out. But what are some of the strains? What was that? What are some of the strains that oh. you work with? Um, so I love um, Nepal Chitwan. It's very like heart opening. It feels like very happy. Um, for some people that are like really uh, like almost need more of an Adderall type experience for focus, I would say True Albino Teacher is a good one. Um Louisiana albino is nice. Uh, Happy heart is nice. Golden teacher is nice. Um, Things like B plus is a nice one. It has a lot of energy to it. It feels like coffee. Um, Things like tidal wave albino penis envy. I wouldn't work with those in a microdosing capacity. Um, I do have a guide, a a basic microdosing guide that talks about dialing in the basics of microdosing and and enlist some other strains. Um, And also, if anyone is like wanting to get a little bit more serious about this, and even if they want to go about it on their own, um, they can either reach out to me or work with another facilitator that I've worked with to have a 30 minute consultation to take all of these things in, in mind. So like, your facilitator should be asking you like, what is your height and weight and what Mm. pharmaceuticals are you on? And uh, what is your experience and tolerance with other things like THC or whatever it is? And do you have any history of schizophrenia or bipolar or bipolar in your family? Have you had a major life transition in the last couple of months? All of those things, if they're not asking you that, they are not trained as they should be (laughs) in my opinion. Mm. Good points there. Yeah. (laughs) I just keep thinking about how I went about microdosing on my own and it literally felt like I was in my own little chemical experiment. (laughs) And I was sharing with you before we hopped on live that I had some uncomfortable experiences because, you know, trying you know, someone else's strain of mushrooms versus the one I'm used to. And just saying, oh yeah, I know that I can do up to like a gram and I'm going to feel okay. I'm just going to feel a little buzz. It'll be fun. Like let's go golfing. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. So very, very good information. Um, 
I love your guidance on that. Yeah. That yeah. This- to, your, to your point, albino penis envy is like uh, two grams to every like single gram of like golden teacher. So wow. it, it that that's like a huge thing that I wish people understood. Strains mm-hmm. are not created equal and you will have a completely different experience. Not to mention if you have less food in your stomach, you're more stressed, you haven't been sleeping well, you don't feel like you're in the best set and setting like if you're at your home typically microdosing and you're in your very normal environments and all of a sudden you're at a concert and you take a strain that's like much stronger than what you're used to that's when you will feel overstimulated and you will want to get like you will shut down a bit and so it is really important to not develop ptsd with these medicines because as you said it makes you not want to touch them for a while Yes. And you could have gained a lot of benefit from like continuing on, right? And so I would say the two biggest mistakes people make is like at first they do it so intuitively that it is like they'll just pick it up once in a blue moon. And it's nice for a nice creative pop or a nice like down regulating of your nervous system. But for true change to happen, it does take more of a devoted, dedicated container at first. And or they take too much where they'll like do the Paul Stamet stack and especially women like microdosing five days in a row is way too intense. And they don't even know that niacin causes a flush and they'll take that because it's part of the stack. And then they'll be like, what is this feeling? And then they hate it. And so there's just so much information on the internet. And uh, as with Western medical stuff, a lot of it is for men and was tested on men and, not taking into account where you are in your cycle and all the things. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it is really important to understand uh, for you, what's right for you. I love that. I wish I had you. (laughs) Yeah, no, I have some PTSD from that experience. Enough time has gone by that. It's been like a year and a half, but I honestly am hesitant to play with that medicine because it was not a fun experience at all. And yeah, when I was done with that, I was like, okay, never again. (laughs) And I, and I see people having amazing, beautiful experiences. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. man, like kind of jealous. Like I, I screwed up, you know, I went about it the wrong way. Um, so we have a, so (laughs) someone said this information is so fucking awesome. And (laughs) Derek said, is it the Chilton? Chitwan. Nepal Chilton. Okay. That yeah. makes you throw up on a big dose. Could it also be the strength of the strain as well? So uh, that's a really good question. So um it it's also in my guide. If you are taking under a gram, uh it's okay to ingest the fruiting body. So that would mean like it's in a chocolate or it's in a capsule. Um, If you take, especially if you have a sensitive stomach and you put all of that mushroom in your stomach, it will likely make you throw up, which being really uncomfortable and focusing on the fact you have to throw up really deviates your mind in a direction that you don't want to go. And also I believe that it's very it's, it's overwhelming to have the medicine in your system for as long as sometimes digestion systems like take to, to go through it. So like sometimes that's why, especially when your idea of time is skewed and you are like not enjoying the experience and it turns into four to six hours, that is way too long for my opinion, for pleasure or for work, like doing the inner work. And so I like the lemon tech method or even not including the lemon, but the hot water. So I would grind it, put it in in lemon juice and hot water and completely strain out all of the fruiting body. And what's nice about that is that you can go much lower in your dose because it does strengthen it a bit, but it acts Mm -hmm. as your stomach acid and it actually changes it for you instead of it going through your stomach process that -hmm. allows it to go into your bloodstream and then leave it faster. So it's a nice, tight, pretty little three to four hour experience. And 
your stomach does not get as upset, if at all, in that method. And so as long as you're straining out all of the fruiting body, you shouldn't be throwing up. So I just want to make sure I understand this. So you mean like boiling some hot water and then putting the mushrooms on a strainer, like letting it fall through, but not like the actual big, the actual pieces, right? Is that what you're saying? So you can, you can grind it however you want it, it, a little bit of a, um, not such a fine grind, but like still has some texture to it. You mm -hmm. can, um, what I would suggest okay. is put it in the bottom of the cup, squeeze some lemon juice on it to where it's kind of like a consistency of a paste, not like it's swimming in it. And you leave that in there for 10 or 15 minutes. And then you add the hot water. It's kind of like making mushroom tea. You can also add other herbs, like nothing with caffeine, but like mint or rose or whatever you want, if you would like. And then mm -hmm. you strain everything out of that okay. liquid. And then you can add honey to it because sometimes mushrooms don't taste that great. But uh, I would wait till it cools and then I would drink it all at once because if you take an hour to drink it, uh, it it's going to be like the experience will not be as like consistent, right? So if you wait till it cools and you drink it all and you're in a safe, good place, you will have a way better experience than if you like try to eat two grams of mushrooms. Most people will feel nauseous if not throw up. Okay. And does that work for larger doses, like four or five grams too? Oh yeah. I mean, any, anything over two grams, like if you're you doing do it a way. dose, you should definitely do it, be doing the tea method in my opinion. Okay. And when you do doses, larger doses with people, is it usually like four and up or it varies by client? Yeah. I mean, I'm doing hero doses with people. So that that's technically considered over four grams, uh, right. but all the way up to 10 grams. Wow. I know people who have done that. That's just mm -hmm. crazy. <laughs> what about you, Vizu? What's the highest you've done? <laughs> uh, well, like I said, um, when I was starting out, I was much like you and just like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing like how to go about it. I had, I had the tenacity or like, maybe I'm a masochist. I don't know, but <laughs> I just started seeing such huge shifts that even though I had some pretty intense experiences, I was just like, I'm on to something here. Um, but most people are going to be like, okay, that was enough of that. But yeah, I, one of the, I was getting into it between microdosing and doing tea experiences. And then I read something that, that Terrence McKenna said about, you don't know anything about anything until you do five grams of mushrooms in the dark. And when he wrote that albino penis envy didn't exist. It's much like the cannabis world where it's like much stronger now than it was in the sixties. And so I <laughs> just took five grams of penis envy, uh, which is, Technically, if you think about it, like 10 grams of Golden Teacher. And so it was wow. a very wild ride. And uh, that was my first hero dose. And I'm very grateful for that experience. It was the most incredible thing uh, ever. I would say like, as you continue to work with the medicine, the shell that you have around you really softens your intuition, your sense of empowerment, uh, your attunement to the world around you become so like clear and soft and connected that less medicine is necessary in my, mm. in my experience. And I have worked with a lot of people that, and a lot of facilitators and they all agree with me that it's not like this endless need for these big trips. Um, I, I would say like the ayahuasca world is kind of like chasing the tiger's tail where people keep going back and back and back and back and back. If you're integrating your experiences correctly, I believe like one big trip a year might be good to wipe the slate clean and to bring you back to your sense of self or maybe a nice recreational dose with your partner to reconnect and rebond and like clear away all the thousand little cuts that happen throughout the year or mm -hmm. uh, having a nice microdosing container that you're like 
focused on a specific part of your business or your life that you really want to connect with. So, yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for eight years personally, but sometimes people think that I'm just like always on mushrooms and that's definitely not the case. Um, it was the first two years that I was like really trying to understand it. And then I tried many other psychedelics as well to know like, what is this psychedelic world about? And I just mm -hmm. keep coming back to mushrooms and devoted my life to mushrooms now, just because I do love that in order to rewire your brain, these big profound experiences, like a big LSD trip or ayahuasca trip is really hard to then understand what to do with that information to change your life. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. saying that it's not great to have that big cracking open happen. But for me, mushrooms were like these big profound experiences with microdosing that helps my brain open and my nervous system soften to actual change in my life. And so it is like easy for my nervous system to snap back to fight or flight, especially in our crazy world. And I need something to come back to every now and again to soften me or to remind me of things. And so that's what I love so much about mushrooms, but everyone is going to need potentially a different medicine or a different experience with mushrooms. What would you consider a recreational dose? So your brain is so powerful that your intention is actually the thing that creates the recreational side of things. So if you mm -hmm. go in with the intention of doing work, you can do the work on a low dose and you can mm -hmm. do the work on a high dose with recreation yeah. or pleasure. You can have a self-pleasure experience or a nice massage with your partner on a microdose and really get into a state of like bliss or one to two grams camping with friends or out at a concert. Once you know that you can handle like one gram and you're in the state of, I am safe, everything is okay, I trust the mushrooms. <laughs> also, to me, uh, maybe there was stuff that needed to come up to be processed in that hard time that you had and it just wasn't the right time. Mm, so like if no. you do wanna make sure that you're gonna have a pleasurable experience out in the world, do yeah. a little experience at home a couple weeks before and see if anything wants to come up to be processed. And then you'll yeah. be in a much better state to actually do something recreationally, especially like publicly. So yeah, yeah. recreation to me varies, but I mean, I can have fun on 0.1 of a gram all the way up to 0.2, anything over point, like two grams. I'm like, that is not recreation for me. That is work. <laughs> um, mm. I have a, I have a pretty low tolerance, so um, I could not be social over two grams. It would not be easy for me to be in public or talk to people. <laughs> yeah. I've never done more than two grams. I've had other psychedelic experiences with other medicines. Um, and to be honest with you, I've had more experiences without plant medicine, like out of body experiences than with, but I'm one of those people where I notice some people are like sensitive. Like I've had meditative experiences, like at like wild with nothing, absolutely nothing. But some people can tune into that easier than others, but I, we all have that ability. Right. So yeah. Um, absolutely. What about you, Sin? You've had any good <laughs> mushroom experiences? I have, I have, and I don't know, um, how much or what the strand was or anything but I do know that intention is important and that's I mean I'm if you didn't know Bijou I'm a um Bijou I'm a uh, hypnotherapist so like oh, really like getting into the mental work and that kind of thing so setting the intention before you're doing anything is huge for me um but nothing too too crazy other than being really young and being like oh yeah, I really don't like that person. And now I really don't like what I'm feeling right now. And I need to get out of this situation and feeling really trapped and unsafe. And that was one of my first experiences. And I was like, yeah, it'll be a while before I do that again. Um, mm -hmm. But after that, later on, lots of good experiences of just being super um, zen. And like, even with my cat, like there was a time when <laughs> I looked at my cat and he was across the room and I was seeing like these laser beams. And then mm -hmm. he looked at me and he went, wow. 
And he like came up to me and right in my face. And he was like, hello, you know, like totally having a conversation with me. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's I've like they know, them. right? They do. Yeah. Oh, I talk to my animals. <laughs> Sorry. 100%. Yeah, it, They're like, oh my gosh, her brain is open. She can yeah. understand me right now. This is cool, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so cool. funny. I feel like I've had similar experiences where I feel like animals all, I feel like I've had experiences where I felt like even like bugs, like anything living around me, like knew like, oh, she's on mushrooms. Let's just push this quote her. Yeah. Yeah, it's nature's a whole other awesome way we, mushrooms. for sure. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, she's awake. She's she's sensing us. And oh, it's just so beautiful. It 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 does blow my mind though, to your point, how many people have told me when I ask them about their mushroom experiences, they're like, I don't know what strainer dose. I'm like, y'all are very trusting people. I I I'm like a very open and like I'm yeah. a fire sign. So I will like, we're doing a thing, I'll do a thing. But uh yeah, it's just like people are like I don't know someone gave me some and I'm like wow I am not that trusting <laughs> yeah I I think that's just my personality too you know it's like I bought a Harley Davidson when I was 22 and didn't know how to write it and I was just like shit I'm doing this and I'm gonna write it you know <laughs> I feel like that's like how the mainstream world from what I've seen and I've lived on the east and the west coast and I, everyone just kind of takes if they're taking mushrooms they take it they don't know the strain there's like a weird name that maybe they know maybe they don't and then like yeah I had no instruction on anything and then I was just kind of playing and I thought like oh I've had a much bigger dose so I should be good with this smaller dose and I went golfing with a friend who is very moody while golfing also and it was yeah you could feel his energy yeah worst experience Uh and and some mushrooms are like really like a body high and some are really mental and this was both, but it was very mental and I could not shut it off. I do not like body highs of any kind in any kind of anything. That is not my jam. (laughs) I kind of do. Like I, my experience, I did about like 1.6 grams and my friend and I, we were painting. This is like, this is like early during the COVID stuff. And um, everybody was just home chilling and we, we took mushrooms and we were like painting. I had a blast and it was like a buzzing feeling and just kind of like giddy, like mm-hmm. had a blast. So I thought, okay, 1.6 grams, I'll be fine with like 0.9 and going golfing with my friend. It's a nice sunny day. And it was the worst. Mm-hmm. And I think it's also knowing that when you, when you're grinding them up, right. Because sometimes tell me if I'm wrong, sometimes the stem would be more potent than like the, um, cap. the cap or vice versa, vice versa maybe, I think. right. Or is that not true? It depends on the strain, but there are strains that, yeah, technically that could be the case. Um, but you just don't know. And that's why you definitely, like, I'm not the the type it's like I'm just gonna nibble off a piece of cap like uh that that's just Russian roulette to me um what I want to do is consistent grind and like understand what what my tolerance is and then what am I doing here but but to your point like that's another reason why I love mushrooms is we are very heady people and we'll go through 15 years of therapy where we're intellectualizing our, our trauma, which is great because we do need to get it out in front of us and we do need to understand our patterns and our shadow, but we're missing a big part, which is the somatic healing side of things. Mm-hmm. And that's why you might not really love the body part because we are mm-hmm. using our bodies as storage units a lot of times. And when we, when the mushrooms bring us back down into our body, it can feel very uncomfortable unless we process some stuff out of it. And so I will say majority of my clients, like they, they're at this tipping point where they've done a lot of work, but they can't really get out of big patterns. And it's because the body is not on board yet. And so it's like their, their brain understands things. And that's what makes them feel crazy is they're like, I know this about myself, but like, why can't I change it? And it's like, your body is dragging its heels because it doesn't feel safe and hasn't processed things yet. And so to me, I've seen 
like a huge part of mushroom work is somatics. It is the like mm. shift that happens within the body. And that typically doesn't feel great all the time. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it feels really good. And sometimes it's like, oh, <laughs> this is yeah. trauma leaving my body and good riddance. Yeah. It doesn't feel great right now. I guess I never thought about it like that. That makes a lot of sense. And then it depends on where you are again, too. Like, are you safe where you're at? Is the setting, who are you with? That kind of thing. If you're having that experience where you're in a car watching a movie, that's not fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it feels um, out of control. Right. Since we wasted so much time with the fun technology issues in the beginning, we're kind of coming to the end of our session. I want to respect your time, Bijou. Usually we'll end the recording, hang out for like a minute or two in case there's any last minute questions on Facebook. Uh, please make sure to get those in now. But I have one last question. Um, I want to know if you could tell us what, like thinking back to the clients that you've worked with, what is some of the biggest breakthroughs that you've seen or changes that you've mm. seen using, um, just working with you and using different dosing? Oh, I mean, that's what's been the coolest part of my job is, I mean, there have been not to put too much like emphasis or credit to the medicine because it's the people doing the work, but they technically did try a lot before mushrooms was the thing that worked for them. And side note, like sometimes people come to me and be like, I've tried all these things. I've tried EMDR and talk therapy and yoga and all these things. And to me, I believe those are stepping stones to get you to a really good place where sometimes you do need something that is stronger than your mind and addressing the body, like I said. So I have seen mushrooms work for some people way better than other things or be the catalyst that they finally needed at the end. But I've seen people quit huge addictions that they could never get a hold of. I've seen mm -hmm. people's brains come back after injury. So like stroke or trauma, mm -hmm. I've seen uh, marriages not end. I've seen um, kids re connect with their parents. And I mean, kids like in their twenties. Um, I mean, I've seen some of the most beautiful things that a human could see in people coming back to themselves and healing and up leveling. I've seen people 10 X their business. I've seen people heal these like crazy, um, illnesses that the doctors couldn't figure out and it was all emotional and they didn't know that because we don't talk about that in our society so yeah I've seen some crazy stuff happen and now I know why they call it magic because it seems like magic to us but I do believe that one day we're going to be able to prove in depth uh, with science like how this is actually helping so many people yep I love well it. do you even see you can see it on google if you look just the pictures of what a brain looks like when it's dosing, you know, I, all the neural pathways open. It's phenomenal. Like, yeah. Yep. There's so much more. We're just on the very tippy top of everything that's going to explode open really soon. That's exciting. Love yeah. it. Really exciting. And definitely want to chat more. Um, you've got me interested a lot more now. Um, and maybe I'll give it a second chance. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for your time. Let's wrap up the recording version. We'll hang out just for a quick moment. So if you guys have a last minute question on Facebook, pop it in there. Um, please tell us, Bijou, um, where people can find you. And if there's anything that you want to promote, if you're taking on new clients, or I know you've got a retreat, you know, just let us know where to find you and what you got going on. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. You guys asked such great questions. It was really fun to go into all of this. Um, I'm most active on Instagram. Uh, most people will um, follow me for a minute, make sure I'm their vibe, uh, and then potentially book a call, a consultation through the link in my bio. And I like that because I get to know a lot about them and we can discuss potentially what's right for them. And at the very least, they'll get my suggestion on dose strain and protocol in my guide. And then they could understand if I'm a right fit for them with the work that they're trying to do and what that would look like. Um, or sometimes I have suggestions for other facilitators that really specialize in this specific type of 
of healing or trauma or or up leveling. Um, and so that's, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, like you said, I either do one-on-one, -on -one, um, work with people or we do one-on-one -on -one experiences in person or group retreats. And so I have a couple of things coming up, um, this summer that is, that's going to be really cool. So I would say, yeah, either my website or, um, Instagram is the best place to, to find me. And both of them are mushroom mamacita with an S. Awesome. I love it. Love that name. Thanks. All right. Um, thank well, you thank here. you so much. We'll wrap up the recording. It's been an awesome episode. And for everyone watching uh, the replay on YouTube Rumble, thank you so much. Please subscribe YouTube Rumble, Instagram, find us Sovereign AF Podcast. Next week, we're going to talk all about food sovereignty and how to take back our food supply. So very important episode. Um, every week is amazing. We have the best guests ever. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thanks. We everyone. love Bye. you guys.